Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about constant rate of change and direct variation. And we're going to break this lesson into two parts. The first part, we're going to talk about constant rate of change. And the I can statements we're working on is I can find the constant rate of change for a linear relationship and the slope of a line. And we've already been talking about this, so it shouldn't be too new for you. Some of the vocab we're going to talk about, though, is rate of change, linear relationship, which we already know is a relationship between x and y that forms a line on a graph. And it's easy to pick out linear relationships because it has the word line right in it. Constant rate of change, which just means that we are going to increase or decrease by the same amount. And then the word slope. And just a really quick overview, um, rate of change can be positive, negative, or zero, meaning no change. So it's not going to go, um, you know, we're not going to be moving further away or closer to something. The temperature isn't going to be rising or falling, in this case, um, in the graph that we see here, because um, it's, it, there's no change in the temperature over time, okay? And when we talk about a positive rate of change, we're talking about an increase. A negative rate of change is a decrease, and zero change um, means no change. And we've talked already about how um, it's basically the trend or correlation. If it's a positive, negative, um, or zero correlation, which we haven't talked much about zero. And we've already talked about the word slope, so let's review that. The slope of a line it describes the rate of change and how it increases or decreases. And it, um, we can tell, looking at a line, by choosing any two points that are easy to find on a line and then finding the ratio of the difference between them. Okay, so we've already discussed this um, formula right here where to find the slope, I need to take two points. I have x1 and y1, and x2 and y2, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the y's to find the vertical change, or the rise, and then I'm going to subtract the x's to find the horizontal change, or the runs. Now, in this case, um, x1 and x, um, x1 or x2, um, they won't equal, um, or x2 cannot equal x1. Because if it does, then we know we have a vertical line, and that's undefined. So let's look at finding a rate of change, okay? This table shows the distance that is traveled on a zip line tour. So we want to find the constant rate of change between the quantities. So if I wanted to do that, the first thing I need to do is find the unit rate to determine the constant rate of change, or what is the change in y over the change in x, the rise over the run. So to do that, the change in the distance, because this top one is going to represent my y value, or this bottom one, sorry, distance is my y value, time is independent, so it's going to be my x value. So the change in the distance is 12. I'm going up 12 every time. Or 24 minus 12 is 12. The change in time, I'm increasing by 2 each time, 2 seconds. Or 4 minus 2 is 2. And we talked about in the last unit, writing it as a unit rate means that my denominator must be 1. So my change in distance over my change in time, or my rate of change is 6 feet per second because we are moving 6 feet for every second. And therefore, we would say the constant rate of change is 6 feet per second. Now it's your turn. Find the constant rate of change between the quantities in the table. Okay, let's look at a different example. A circular design on an internet advertisement has two circles, one that is decreasing in size and one that is increasing in size. Find the constant rate of change for the radius of circle one. So we are looking at this green line here because that's circle one in the graph shown. 
then interpret its meaning. Okay, so first thing I need to do is choose any two points on the green line. And so here I have chosen to, uh, 2, 3, because that's a good point on the line. I'm sorry, the green line. 2, 5, and 6, 4, because those are easy to identify points on this line. Okay? And, um, you know, it means two, 2, 5 tells me that I am going 2 sec. Um, in two seconds, the radius will be five centimeters, and six four tells me that in six after six seconds, the radius will be four centimeters. So what can we say? We already know what's happening to the radius as time goes on. We see it's decreasing. So let's go on to step two. So once I found my two points, I need to find the rate of change. So the change in y. So how did the radius change from my first point, or yeah, to go from my first point to my second point? So 4 minus 5. And how did the um, time change between the first and second point? 6 minus 2. Because we went 6 seconds minus 2 seconds. And it really doesn't matter which point you put first to subtract. Um, you may end up having a negative number on top and bottom. So usually you're going to want to go with the second one first when you subtract. But if not, that's okay. You can, you'll just know that if you end up with two negatives, it's going to be negative divided by negative, which is positive. Um, but once you do that, you get one centimeter for four seconds, and then we need to simplify to write it as a unit rate, because we want to have that denominator one. So if I divide the numerator and denominator by one, I get negative 2,500 centimeters per second. So that's the unit rate. So we can say the rate of change is negative 25 hundredth centimeters per second, which means that the radius of the circle is decreasing at a rate of 25 hundredths for every second. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and um, solve this problem in the work section of your WSQ. Okay, so let's work on finding the slope of these lines. It's the same thing as rate of change. I need to first find the change in the rise, or change in y, over change in x. It's no different from what we had already been doing. And then put that over the change in x. So choose any two points, 4, 3, and 8, 6. I find my, um, the blue numbers represent the y's, so 6 minus 3 over 8 minus 4. Notice I went from point 0.2 to point 0.1 when I was subtracting the y's, so I had to go from point 0.2 to point 0.1 when I was subtracting the x's. And then simplify to get a slope of 3 fourths. And we leave it as a fraction. We're not going to write slope as a decimal. That's the difference between rate of change and slope. Slope does not need to be a unit rate. We can leave it as a fraction. If we wanted to do b, Again, I take the change in y over the change in x, so subtract y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, oops, x2 minus x1, right here, okay? And go ahead and simplify, I get positive 4, because 2 minus negative 2 is 4, over negative 6, which gives me negative 2 thirds when I simplify. Now it's your turn. Try this, these two problems in the work section of your WSQ. Okay. If you were given two points, you can still find the slope of the line that would pass through those two points. The same way we found constant rate of change or slope in the previous problems. If you're just given the points, you don't always have to graph them. But you still use this formula to find the slope. And remember, m represents slope, okay? So change in y over change in x. So for a, I would take um, the second point, 2, 4, and 
um, negative 3, 4. y2 minus y1 is 4 minus 4. x2 minus x1 is negative 3 minus 2. And if you'll notice, 4 minus 4 is 0. It doesn't matter what the denominator is. If your numerator is 0, your slope will always be 0. Number 2 is a little different because in this problem, I get 0 in the denominator. So I can't divide negative 3 by 0, so we would say the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Now it's your turn. Try these problems in the work section of your WSQ. Okay, let's move on to direct variation. And finding direct variation is pretty simple. Um, the I can statements we're working on today are I can identify direct variation and I can use direct variation to solve problems. The vocabulary you need to know are direct variation and constant variation. So, direct variation is a relationship in which the ratio of y to x is a constant, or m. Sound familiar? We say y varies directly with x if there is a constant, m. So, if I take any y value and divide it by x, I get the slope, basically, or y equals mx. m, the slope, cannot be zero for it to be a direct variation. Notice the difference between the equation for direct variation and slope-intercept form that we've talked about. In direct variation, I cannot add anything to y equals mx. If I do, it won't be a direct variation. So that tells me that the graph of a relationship with a direct variation must pass through the um, origin. So let's look at an example. This graph shows the cost of different amounts of trail mix. Determine if the relationship between cost and weight of the trail mix is a direct variation. To do this, we need to determine if the relationship is direct by finding the cost y and dividing it by x for any points on the graph. And if they are the same, if I get the same unit rate for any points on this graph, I know it's a direct variation. So for example, four pounds, um, the for a weight of four pounds, it's going to cost $14. An eight pound bag is going to cost $28. Um, a 12 pound bag is going to cost $42. And when I find the unit rates for each of these, I get the same thing. So, that tells me that the ratio, $3.50 per pound, is a constant rate. And since the graph passes through the origin and the ratios are a constant rate, we can say we have a direct variation. You might notice that in a direct variation, we also have a linear relationship. Now it's your turn. Determine if the relationship between the distance in miles and time in minutes is a direct variation. Let's try another problem. The equation, so we've looked at a graph. Now let's go from the equation. y equals 40x represents the distance y in miles. An ostrich can travel in x hours. Determine whether there is a constant um, of variation. And if so, explain what, the rep what that represents in the situation. So, y equals mx is the equation we're looking for, okay? m is the constant of variation, m is 40. So 40 equals our constant of variation. So any point that I put in for y, the x value, when I divide them, must give me 40 for it to be a direct variation. So the constant of variation is 40, and that means that the ostrich can travel 40 miles per hour. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and solve this problem in the work section of your WSQ. 
We are done with